You know this little light of mine. Church, I'm going to let it shine. Yes, this little light of mine. You know that I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. Oh, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. You know all in my home, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Yes, all in my home. You know that I'm going to let it shine. Oh, all in my home. Oh, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. church. Lord, I got to let it shine. Oh, Lord, you know I'm going to let it shine. Oh, Lord, you know that I'm going to let it shine. Yes, it shines. Oh, Lord, you know that Jesus gave it to me. That's why I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. That's why I'm going to let it shine. You know that Jesus gave it to me. Oh, Lord, I'm going to let it shine. That's why I let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, church, this Light of mine, Lord, I'm got to let it shine. You know that I'm oh, this little light. You know that I'm gonna let it yeah, shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everybody glad to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. God has been good to a whole lot of folks this morning. Amen. And we ought to be glad to be in the house of prayer one more time. Amen. Let us stand for our hymn of praise. Today is Connection Lay Day. And we're going to do the Connection Lay Hymn. Is it going to be a screen? It's going to be on the screen. Amen.
that we believe in. be seated. All righty. I had to turn my hearing aids up. I thought I was going deaf again. Um, condolences to the Crawford family and the loss of Dr. Ruth B. Crawford. Memorial services will be held on Saturday, October 19th. At 1 p.m. at Payne College Chapel, missionaries are asked to wear white with a touch of blue, royal blue. Early arrival is encouraged. Today is Connection Olay Day. Please give a special love offering today for the Graham Webb Kennedy Scholarship. The senior ministry trip to Charleston, uh, South Carolina is still on for Wednesday. If you are, if you have paid, please be sure to pick up a flyer with the itinerary for the trip. They are available in the fellowship hall. Any seats left? Yeah. All right. There's w one seat left. One seat left. Any seat? Better get it while it's hot today. One seat left. All right. Maybe two. Breast, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, Sunday, October 20th, we will all wear pink. Pink Sunday is October 20th. Please wear any shade of pink in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We would like to honor those survivors, so please uh, leave your name and on the sign-up sheet in the Fellowship Hall so we can recognize you. The Christian Training Institute will be scheduled for October 26th, it'll be here at Williams Memorial beginning at 8.30 a.m. with registration. Instructions on how to register are available in the Fellowship Hall. This is a meeting for office of children and youth. The 151st church anniversary is upon us. We are still, s we're not searching for a chairperson no more. We got him. Right, Dr. Clark? All right. Uh, if you would like your, uh, we are soliciting ads, full page, half page, quarter page, and uh, make sure you get your ads in. Uh, any person who is assisting with the church anniversary, you are asked to meet with Dr. Cla Clark after church. Where are you going to meet, Dr. Clark? Dr. Clark, where you gonna be? All right, all right. Be with Dr. Clark after church here in the sanctuary. If you'd like to receive text alerts for the church, uh, please place your name and cell phone number on the list in the fellowship hall to be added to the system. Please join us for Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Join us this Tuesday on Tuesday for noon. Day power prayer beginning at 12 noon. Uh, we are back on schedule starting this Tuesday at 12 noon. Power prayer. Uh, you don't have to pray. You can come just just call in and listen to others pray and read, and you can hear some highlights of some good blessings from others. And Wednesday night Bible study will be back on this Wednesday uh, via the conference call number. So it's the um, power prayer is also via the conference call number. Uh, Tuesday morning Bible study is back on this week on the conference call number at 10 a.m. If you need a ride to worship, please call church. We'll help you get here. Midweek service replay every Wednesday at 1 p.m. So on the seat, those of you who have been uh, sending your tithes and offerings and dropping it off using PayPal, Givelify, mailing in, however you've been doing it, keep on doing it. We appreciate you, and God continue to bless your offerings. 
I was looking at shut in the list this morning. So Sister Margaret Armstrong, Sister Dorothy Burley, Brother Prince Burley Sr., Sister Ruthie Davis, Sister Dorothy Green, Sister Dorothy Dick, Sister Judy Drumro, Brother Edward Fletcher, Sister Janet Franklin, Sister Gloria Freeman, Sister Evelyn Griffin, Sister Betty Joseph, Sister Jacqueline Lawrence, Brother Gerard Lewis, Sister Deborah Little, Sister Lucy Madison, Sister Doris McGee, Sister Lonnie Meadows, Sister Frances Wilson. Our special prayer request list consists of Master Adrian Blue, Sister Jolisa Coleman, Brother Tony Darby, Brother Bobby Dorsey, Brother Todd Ford, Sister Mary Trail, Sister Bernadine Hammonds, Brother James Allen Hammonds, Sister Cynthia Harris, Brother Vincent Hope, Sister Sandra Hood, Brother Tr Tracy Hood, Brother Zedric Ingram, Reverend Cecilia Johnson, Sister Lulu King, Sister Shadiqua Lewis, Sister Karen Lovett, Sister Courtney McBride, Sister Story McBride, Sister Carol McFarlane, Brother Ricky Nichols, Reverend Jerry Poole, Sister Evelyn Powell, Brother Johnny Powell, Sister Barbara Pulliam, Brother T.J. Pulliam, Sister Nancy Smith, Brother Dennis Wyman, Sister Harry William, Sister Donna Wilson, Sister Ernestine Wright, and Brother Andre Wooten. And we acknowledge, I see some of you here this morning. It's your great pleasure to see you this morning. So good to see you. May God continue to bless each and every one of you this morning. We any first time visitors this morning? First time visitors this morning. First time visitors this morning. Amen. Well, welcome, my brother. Would you like to introduce yourself? Amen. So good to have you with us this morning. Thank you, thank you. Amen. All right. Now we will have our Sunday School Review by Sister Shirley Douglas. Good morning, church family and friends, visitors. We're glad to be here this morning. Moving a little slow this morning, but I'm, <laughs> I'm here. Great is God's faithfulness to us. Our Sunday school lesson for day to for today is titled "A Plea for Deliverance," and our background scripture is Psalms 22, verses 1 through 11. According to the lesson text, there are approximately six types of psalms in the Old Testament. There are psalms of lament, thanksgiving, wisdom, praise, and others. The psalm of our lesson today is a psalm of lament which is a psalm expressing anguish and sorrow and suffering. David cried out to the Lord, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have we ever been there? I have, I've been there. When I've cried out, Lord, where are you? I'm still here, do you hear? My cries, do you hear my prayers? My God, my God, have you forsaken me? 
As we know, Saul wanted to destroy David because God had chosen David to be the next king over Israel. This psalm may have been composed during David's persecution by Saul. David's enemies took advantage of David's situation to make a spectacle of his suffering. They heaped insults on him because he trusted in God. We know the haters and the naysayers, they're still with us, aren't they? We have them today, okay? They would say things like, if your God is so great, why can't he save you? Have you, anybody ever said that to you? Have you ever heard that? If your God is so great, why can't he save you? If God is so great, why does he allow children to die? Innocent women and men to die. If God is so great, why does he allow storms to come in our lives? Well, we don't have the answers, but we know the rest of the story. God did not forsake David. David lived and became a great king, didn't he? God didn't forsake him. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus said these very words as he hung on the cross. David's experience, as described in this psalm, mirrored prophetic details about Jesus' crucifixion. Again, we're not worried because we know the rest of the story. Yes, Jesus was mocked. He was beaten. He was spat upon. He was nailed to the cross. But we know that victory was his. He rose from the dead and he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father. David may have felt hopeless, but he was not without hope. David did not lose faith because he worshiped God, the only one who is faithful and present in the midst of our suffering. In the midst of our suffering, we can also trust that God is present and with us and will be faithful to us. Remember, when we are in despair, we can cry out to Jesus. He hears our prayers and our sorrows, and he will heal our pain. I want to tell you a little story. Uh, those of you who may have listened to Bishop Patterson years ago, he told this story about a couple, and they were young, they were in love, and they would ride out sometimes, go on a date, and they would sit so close together in the car that you couldn't tell whether it was one person or two persons in the car. Now, most of you are too young to remember when cars had a bench seat. You could fit three or four people on there. We didn't have the bucket seats and all that. So they were sitting very close together. Well, eventually they got married. And as the years went by, uh, they kind of got farther and farther apart. Uh, you know, he was over there behind the steering wheel and she was way over there by the, the door. And she remarked to him one day, honey, uh, you know, we used to sit so close together, and now we're so far apart. And he said to her, well, the steering, place is in the, the steering wheel is in the same place. I'm in the same place. Who moved? If God is distant in your life today, who moved? God is still where God has always been, and he will always be there. He's not going to leave us or forsake us. Let us pray. 
Holy God, you are all powerful and always present. You know us when we experience joy and gladness and when we are experiencing sadness and grief. In seasons of lament, remind us to call out to you, even if all we can proclaim, proclaim is our grief. We trust in your unfailing love and your faithfulness to us. Hear the cries of our hearts and come quickly to our aid so that we might experience the comfort and deliverance only you can provide. In Jesus' name we pray. And the thought to remember, cry out to God. He's always faithful. Thank you, Sister Darby, uh, for reminding me to call, cry out to God. And uh, I know I'm not supposed to be standing on this leg, and but Brother Wilson, I just can't do right. I was talking with Reverend Cecilia Johnson last night, and. Um, If you didn't know, um, I know many of us had our homes touched by this Hurricane Aileen just a couple weeks ago. And but she told me her story. She's she's her home was destroyed. It's going to be six months before she gets back into her home. And she talked about how all these trees fell on her home and. But they were laying in the bedroom, and only one branch came through the bedroom. And God protected them. God protected them. And uh, Sister Dolphin reminded me when you cry out to God, and God puts his arms around you. We, we pray every week. We pray every week for God to keep his arm around us and keep around you, his arms around you and watch out for you. Because you never know what waits for you down the road and what's waiting on you as you travel up and down the road. But then she says, on this past Thursday, she was coming back from Atlanta with one of her sons. And just as they got on 20 in the Martin Airs, a uh, tractor trailer hit them. But God still had his arms around them. And all they know is a car spinning around. And but when they stopped, they were still okay. I just said all that to say, prayer works. Prayer works, prayer works. The altar is open, the altar is open. You may come this morning to talk to God. I know we've all been through a lot in the last few weeks and God has watched over each of us and kept us. And I just want to say what a mighty God we serve. Oh, gracious Father, we call up to the most high place. We call up to you, Lord, and lean on you, for you are our fortress, our refuge. Is you, Lord, whom we trust.
It's you, Lord, that we cry out to deliver us in the midst of our trials and tribulations. In our sickness and our troubled times, it's you, Lord, who we reach up to when we have nowhere else to go. It's you. It's you. Not one time, not two times, but every time we call out to you, Father, you 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 send an answer to our prayer back down, so we thank you. We thank you. You cover us with your feathers and you keep us under your wings and protect us from hurt, harm, and danger that we don't even see. Your word said that you shield us from all kind of danger and sometimes we don't even see it coming in. We thank you. The terror in the night, we don't see it. We lay there sleeping. But we know that you have an angel watching over us. For all of our sick and shut-in, Father, wherever they may be, you may find them right now, Father. Touch them as only you can. Let them know, Father, that you still, oh, you're still healing. You're still opening doors. You're still touching, and they're still walking again. They're still getting up again. You're still opening eyes and you're still healing from sin. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. For as our eyes look upon the hills, we thank you for the help that you have sent. We thank you for our refuge, a place. Even the most high dwelling place, we thank you, Father, for, for looking down and watching over us. Keeping us. Our loved ones, our children, as they go off to school and as they leave our comfort, you watch over them, Father. We thank you for keeping them. And in your word, Father, we said if, if we turn them over to you, no evil shall bestow them, and we thank you for keeping them. And we thank you. We thank you, Father, that you continue to watch over the homeless and our children that are still on the battlefield somewhere, watch over them, keep them. Every one of them, Father. Every one of them, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, church. I will read the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church Lay Litany. Will you please stand? O oh Lord, we give you thanks for bold faith that stands on your word. Father, thank you for the faith that is dead to death, to doubt, by, be a blind at, to impossibilities, and faith that is challenged to move when we want to stay. A faith that looks back with gratitude and look forward to serving the least of the lost. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Congregation. Lord, on this day, this lay day, we come before you, inspired by the boldness of the apostles in Act 4, as they stood firm in faith and witnessed for, for Christ in the face of opposition, opposition. We ask that you grant us the same courage to move forward together boldly proclaiming your truth. For courage to speak truth to power as Dr. Martin Luther King and Congressman John Lewis did to proclaim freedom and justice for all we stand boldly to testify to your power, even when the world tells us to be silent. God, you have shined a light on the world to reveal some of the evil that surrounds us. And when evil is exposed by your light, it becomes visible and it is called to action for fervent prayers. God, we see evidence of racism, abuse, our power, injustice towards the poor, and the demonstration of man's inhumanity to man. We realize as people, as a, as a body, believers that Christ has not given us the spirit of fear, and so we boldly proclaim we, uh, where there is hate, hatred, we will show love. Where there is despair, hope, and where there is sadness, joy. Congregation. Everybody, the first law. Thank you so much. Good morning. 
I was before you last week and I stated that we have the uh, budget in which you would like to have one to see the administrator. She can give it to you electronically or physically. The budget hasn't changed on our anniversary and our Men and Women Day. Those are our only two fundraisers that we have in the church. We pay in adults to pay $300 per adult, $25 youth and young adults. Five dollars for kids, and I appreciate everything you do to support the ministry of the church. Miss uh, Walters, Brother Kenneth, and Brother Matthews. When you begin offering, you stand and face the aisle, aisle, come down the side, and return by the center. If you don't feel like walking. One of the stewards will be happy to come and get your offering. Thank you so much. Well, I'm glad, I'm so glad, you know I am, yes I am, yes, oh, he didn't have, he didn't have to let me live, oh yes, live. Well, I'm glad, I'm so glad, you know I'm glad, oh yes I am, 
I know he He didn't have to let me live Oh yeah Come on one more time One more time One more time Yes I'm Come on, one more time. One more time. You know that I'm glad. Well, I'm glad. I'm so glad. Are you glad? I know we are glad. I know that he didn't have, he didn't have to let me live, oh let me live, come on Soprano, yes, come on our toes, so glad, Everybody, come on. So glad. Are you glad? Oh, yes, I'm glad. Mighty, mighty, mighty glad. Yes, I'm glad. Say it one more time. I'm glad. You know that he didn't. Oh yeah. Oh, live. One more I can depend. I can depend on God. Yes, I can. I can depend on God. Through the storms, through the rain, through sickness, through the pain. I can, I can, I can depend on God. I can depend, I can depend on God. Yes, I can, I can depend on God. Through the, storms, through the storms, through the rain, through sickness, through the pain, I can, I can, I can depend on God. I remember the day, I remember the hour, fill my soul with the Holy Ghost power. I was lost, I couldn't find my way. He stayed with me each and every day. I was sick, 
I couldn't get well. He healed my body. Now I can tell. I can depend. I can depend. Ooh. I remember that day. I remember it well. Snatched my soul from the goodness of hell. God is so good. Maybe you haven't heard. All you gotta do is just trust in His word. Through the storms, through the rain, through sickness, through the pain, I can depend. I can depend. I can depend on God. I can depend. I can depend on God. Yes, I can. I can depend on God. Through the storms, through the rain, through sickness, through the pain, I can. I can. I can depend on God. I remember the day, I remember the hour. Fill my soul with the Holy Ghost power. I was lost, couldn't find my way. He stayed with me each and every day. I was sick, couldn't get well. Heal my body, now I can tell. I can depend, I can depend, depend on God. I can depend, I can depend on God. Yes, I can, I can depend on God. Through the storms, through the rain, through sickness, through the pain, I can, I can, I can depend on God. attention this morning to the book of Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. We are on Wednesday night Bible study. We're studying Ezekiel. We haven't got to 36 yet, but we're closing in on it. Ezekiel 36 chapter, verse 18, where we find these words written. Therefore, I pour out my fury on them for the blood they have shed on the land and for the idols with which they have defiled it. Therefore, I poured out my fury on them for the blood they had shed on the land and for their idols with which they have defiled it. We end there with just the 18th verse. For subject this morning, when God unleashes his fury on the land, 
when God unleashes his fury on the land. Many folks are looking at the weather and wondering what in the heavens is going on. Never before has a hurricane came up through Florida and gotten this far up into Georgia with winds of those magnitudes. And it committed a lot of damage. Then, then before we could recover from that one, then Milton shows up. And just sweeps across Florida and just tears up everything in its path. And before Milton could get out the way, Nadine shows up. Almost asked to say, let me get some of that action. And 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 before Nadine can even get 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 some of the action, Oscar and Patty starts forming and leads some for us. Strange weather pattern this year, but then, then, then last Sunday, the, the star Jacob returned. I mentioned this to the Bible study group on Wednesday night, Numbers 24 and 17, I see him, but, but not now, I behold him, but not near, a star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter raw Moab and destroy all the sons of Tumor. The star Jacob, the star Jacob, this is the same star astrologers believe that the wise men followed for the birth of Jesus. It showed up after 2,000 years last Sunday and it'll be visible. You can see it at night. You see it at night, it looks almost like a second moon. The same star that the wise men followed to find the baby Jesus. You remember in, in Matthew, they said, we followed a star. And they came to the baby, baby Jesus, and, and, and they found him. But Luke 21, 25 reminds us, and there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves will be rolling. The star of Jacob will be visible for the next 30 days. Has shows up every 2,000 years. Astrologers believe it's the same star that showed up as Noah went into the ark and the flood began. One thing about it, this star got folks shaking in their boots, feeling like the world itself is about to come to the end. Everybody running around like Chicken Little. The world is coming to an end. The world is coming to an end. But, but I believe Jesus said, be ready for no man knows. So in other words, you got to be ready on Monday if he comes. Tuesday if he show up. Wednesday just by chance. Thursday, let's be ready. Friday, Saturday, even on Sunday, you got to be ready 
You can't wait to look for the stars. You can't wait for somebody to call you. You ready? You got to be ready at all times. But if you ain't ready, you better start shaking. But this text this morning in Ezekiel 38, 18, we, we see it says, So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they have shed in the land for the idols with which they have defiled. This verse speaks to a truth that's old as time. God's anger builds like pressure in a pot. <clears throat> when sin piles up and when the pot boils over, ain't nobody safe from the steam. Think about it. It's like this. Our actions are like ingredients in the gumbo. We keep adding spices and spices, thinking it won't make a difference, but eventually the pot gets too hot to handle. That's when the fear of God is unleashed on the land. We see signs of this divine anger all around us today. Wildfires raging the forest, storms battling from coast to coast. These are just natural disasters, but are they our wake-up call? As old folks would say, God don't like ugly. And right now, there's a whole lot of ugly going on around the world. Remember what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. That wasn't just a little Bible story. It was a warning. If it happened one time, surely it can happen again. When sin pollutes the land, God brings a cleansing fire and and let me tell you, the fire don't discriminate between the righteous and the wicked. When God starts wiping the slate, God get everybody. But, 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 we, we Christians have a responsibility. We, we, we just can't sit back and watch the show and, oh, sitting back to my head, that pot going to boil over after a while. We, we, we got to be, be the ones who turn down the heat, adding some sweetness to the balance and the spice. Because when God's patience runs out, it ain't just the sinners who suffer. When, when Haleen came through, it didn't skip by the Christian's house. No, it hit everybody's house. But, 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 but this text focuses on God's righteousness against Israel's sins. The prophet Ezekiel delivered this message during a critical period of Israel history around 586 B.C. when the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem and took many of the Israels into exile. In the larger context, Ezekiel speaks of a time when the people defiled the land through their actions and practices. We, the, the, the term poured out in this verse suggests an overwhelming and unstoppable force of divine judgment. The fury translated as the wrath or hot displeasure. It represents God's intense reaction to the sins of his people. The specific signs highlight the are uh, idolatry. He got God told him, don't mess with them idolatry people, but they kept doing it. The violence with the blood that was shared, both of which was forbidden by the Mosaic law. God's response to these transgressions was to pour out the fury upon them. The phrase was also used in Jeremiah 7. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place. The text warns about the consequences of persistent sin and rebellion against God. However, it's important to note that this judgment is not the end of the story. No, the broader context of Ezekiel 13 also includes promise of restoration and renewal of Israel, demonstrating God's ultimate plan for redemption despite his necessary judgment for sin. In Ezekiel 30, 
God's anger is unleashed on the land. But I don't know if you ever noticed, but when God get mad, he ain't just mad. He mad, mad. When God gets mad, it's not because someone cut him off in traffic. You know how you get mad and you, you, you in traffic, you might say one of them, your cousin words. Or one piece of sweet potato pie. And you knew it was still in there. And you were going back about 11 o'clock at night to get it. And you look in there and, oh, goodness, somebody done got that last piece of pie. And you let one of them words slip. God's anger comes from a place of perfect justice and righteousness. We, the faithful, must continue to remind those who hear us that God is measuring us with a plumb line. <coughs> now, some of y'all, y'all don't know what a plumb line is. He's checking to see if we're living straight and true according to his word. Not, not, not our neighbor's word, not other folks' word, his word. The, 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 the Bible tells us in Amos 7, 8, and the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, behold, I set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not pass by them anymore. Plumb line. Carpenter's plumb line, a brick mason's plumb line. A string with a, with a plumb on the bottom. They set it down, and it's straight, and they use that plumb line to Make sure everything as they go up is straight. God's anger is righteous because it comes from his love for justice. It's a response to the harm done to his creation. You can't do God's folks any way and get away with it. God don't like it. We should strive to straighten up so we can measure up when he judges our witness in the land of the ungodly. If the Bible re records hold, holds true today, then God loves and, and wrath are visited upon earth in visible ways. When he's pleased, the world enjoys a rainbow experience of blessing. Oh, we get oh, fertile crops, mild winters, abundance of food. But when God is angered, there come floods, earthquakes, famines, destruction all over the land. Some days it feels like God is anger. Storm after storm rages, fires, hurricanes in the heartland. The Arctic snow caps are melting. There's a plumb line in the hand of God, and the church must sound the alarm that God is not pleased with some of the stuff we are doing. We must wake up and realize that when, when God's patience runs out, it ain't just sinners who suffer. We all suffer. The drought doesn't skip over a Christian's farm, and the hurricane doesn't curve around a, a, a believer's house. But all we all are not lost, family. We can rise to the occasion because we serve a God who has proven that he can make a way out of no way, open doors that have been shut, and lift fallen hopes and dreams. Our job is to align ourselves with the plumb line, to live righteously, and to be a light in, crook, in a crooked world and show others how to get right with God. Sometimes we're the only one that crooked folks see. And they looking at you, and if you just as crooked as they is, they don't see no straight. Think about it like this. When we were kids, we used to watch Anna Griffin. Y'all remember Anna Griffin where 
beginning of Anna Griffin, I believe it's Opie, throw the stone in the water and the stone hit the water and it waves to go across it. I don't throw a hundred stones in the water. I ain't got one to do that yet. And I think every little, everybody that go to the water try to throw a rock in there and try to make it way spread far beyond the stone line. But but that's how sin works. You, you, you throw it in there, one sin, and it just ripples all out. But God cares deeply about how we treat his creation, how we treat one another, how we do. We sometimes, he, he uses natural events to get our attention to show us the errors of our ways. Sometimes the land suffers because we dump all kind of stuff in the land. We can't dump everything in there and expect it not to come back on. We dump stuff in our rivers, it's going to come back. We cut down the trees, it's going to come back on. We build, we, we build without caring about the soil, and we ignore the needs of the poor in our city. We let greed guide our choices instead of love one another. Each of these actions has consequences. Our rivers are polluted, hurting the fish and the people who depend on them. Cutting down forests lead to erosion, loss of animal habitat. Ca habitat. Careless building practice can cause landslides. Poor, poor, poor caring of the land causes uh, communities to despair. And animals have nowhere to live. That's why they move into town with us. So we watched the road two weeks ago. Big old deer right there in the middle of the road, dead. I'm trying to figure out how he get to town. Everything suffers when we neglect our responsibility to care for God's creation. God put us on here to help take care of this world. I know. You say, well, what that got to do with me? We must strive to make choices to honor God by caring for God's creation. Only then can we begin to heal the damage that has been done to the land. But I don't want to leave you this morning without leaving you without hope. Even when God angers and unleashed, and unleashed, there is still a way back. Our God is a God of second chance. He's always ready to forgive if we just turn back to him. Think about it like this. When a child messes up, a good parent will discipline them. However, the same parents are always ready to embrace the child when they are sorry and mean it. Remember, remember the old hymn, There's a Fountain, where, where William uh, Carper wrote the song while battling deep depression. Yet he found hope in God's endless mercy. We can too. No matter how dark things look, God's light can break through. If the world repents, God will heal. If the world repents, God will forgive. If the world repents, God will heal. If the world repents, God will restore it. It's like when a community comes together after a natural di disaster. People put aside their differences and work to rebuild. That's what spiritual repentance looked like on a bigger scale. We turn away from our wrong choices, turn toward God's way. The Bible gives us a promise in 2 Corinthians 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal the land. Folks, this is good news. It means that we're not stuck. We can change our ways, and God will respond just like a doctor is always ready to heal a patient who seeks help. Our Heavenly Father is always ready to heal our hearts and heal the land. All we got to do is repent. over there saying, Pastor, we're beginning to see how God's fury can shake every foundation of this world. But let's also remember that our God is a forgiving God. His mercy can restore even the most broken among us and restore the land.
I remind you that we all are sinners saved by grace. We live in a sinful land. That's why every day we pray for ourselves and please pray for this world around us. Like the promise, we look for the heavens every morning for a sign of God's mercy. When you open your eyes, God has given you mercy again. We thank God that we see new examples of God, mercy all around us every morning. After a storm or flood, we are devastated. But then we see people helping each other. You see people opening up now, restaurants open up, come by and eat. Folks removing debris. Folks talking to folks they ain't talked to in years. I've met neighbors, I ain't even know who they were. People talking to each other. Every morning, God has a new mercy in store for every one of us. Every morning when I rise, I see the burden of God going to lift off of my shoulder. Every morning when I rise, I see another hill that God will help me climb. Every morning when I rise, I see another bill God's going to help me pay. Every morning when I rise, I see another job God's going to help me find. Every morning when I rise, I see another investment God is going to help me make. Every morning when I rise, I see another test God is going to help me pass. No one of the songwriter wrote, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath proven. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. God's anger can shake the earth when sin pollutes the land. However, there is still some good news. Jesus Christ took God's fury upon himself at Calvary. His sacrifice opens the way for our re repentance and God's mercy. When we were deserving the wrath, he offered us grace. He provided us a way back home through grace when we were lost in our sign. Good times have been restored through God's grace. Broken families can be mended. Addictions can be overturned. Hatred can be turned to love. Poverty can be given away to prosperity. Sickness can be healed. Despair can become hope. Death can lead to eternal life. He was so faithful that over 2,000 years he sent his only begotten son to live among men. Somebody knows him. Somebody called his name is Jesus. He was so faithful that he went all the way to Calvary. Remember that God's righteousness anger comes from his perfect love for justice. Our sins have far-reaching consequences affecting us, affecting the land we stand on. But through God's repentance and mercy, if, if we repent, turn to God, God will hear your cry. God will, re if we repent, turn to God, he will re forgive your transgressions. If you turn to God, he will heal the land. If you turn to God, he will restore your community. All you have to do give you grace, provide a way back home, even if your family is broken, God can put it back together again. Poverty will give away to prosperity, even in death, even in death, you can get eternal life. All of this made possible by our Savior who came to restore us. And just think, he got betrayed by a friend. He was denied by his disciples. The very people who one day praised and mocked him and the soldiers beat him. Nailed him to the cross. But he went to the cross carrying all of our sins. But when the fur of God is unleashed on the land, 
we can turn, still turn to him. Every day, he will wipe away your sins. And for that, we give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. May God bless you. May God lead you to get off this trip. Amen. Let us stand. Go to the church open. Somebody's calling my name. The doors of the church are open this morning. Oh, hush, don't make a sound. Hush, oh, yeah. Somebody's calling my name. My name, hush. Trouble, trouble don't last always. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm, yes, I am. Oh. Somebody's calling my name. Hush, oh Lord. Hush, yeah, yeah. Somebody's calling my name. Oh, hush, mm -hmm. my Lord. for coming this morning. We've been blessed for having each and every one of you and if all hearts and minds are together, let us stand for the doxology. <laughs>
nature faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, for alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. God, continue to bless each and every one of you.